And this year, quarterback by senior Ed Graham. If we get outside, if we can get outside, I think we can do what we want to do. In what way? Well, well we sprint out, and if we can get around the defensive end, it gives me a lot more time than if I have to stop. So you want to keep them moving around a little yes. bit, right? Skills of Graham, the running and pass catching abilities of fullback Dave Craddock to spread the St. Ed's defense around the field. Rangers' speed will have to be their key to success. In addition to Craddock, Graham has excellent slot backs led by Larry Visnick. However, the Eagles from St. Ed's remain imposing. They're big people, and they're awfully good, and, and they're a real fine football team. And we just hope that we can complete some short passes and move the football a little bit in the air and kind of keep their defensive people off balance. If we can do that, uh, I think then we have a chance to, to move the football successfully. Lakewood realizes they can't get into a muscle game with that huge St. Edward football team. But if the Rangers offensive line provides quarterback Ed Graham with the time he needs, then this offense, capable of scoring a lot of points, will be very difficult to contain. All in all, a crowd of about 11,000 expected tomorrow night for the mythical sure they do have the offense. The defense had a good week, but of course they're now up against the St. Edward Eagle, the very strong team that went against Strongsville last week. 18 to zip was a score, three touchdowns. Pacey doing a good job on the returning of punts, catching the ball. Viscomi yet a little bit unproven as far as the quarterback spot is concerned for the St. Edward Eagles. So we'll see what they can do. Pacey could be the big difference in a ball game tonight. Well, I'll tell you, they didn't go through that sign. They went, <laughs> they destroyed it. And there, the white and yellow and black clad, the Eagles of St. Edward. And they're all pumped up. And the round of applause you hear, the very partial fans on our side of the field, the Rangers of Lakewood. Under coach Dick Kirschbaum, who's in the sport here, they had a nice win, 53 to 6 over West Tech last year, and they just did everything they wanted to do. And that Graham, the quarterback, just had a magnificent ball game. Look at the determination right there, Mike. If that'll do it, they're sky high. They're ready for it. The coach feels with the veterans, he can stay with them. And they are talking about that huge offensive line in St. Edwards. Hope they can do some work defensively, do a little stunning, keep their kids fresh and moving about there and get their passing game going. Grant, what about the intensity of a game like this when you talk about uh, the difference of beating last year come back and you really want to want it badly enough? They don't really have the size to do it, but they've got the quickness. Well, they have the veterans and the quickness. That's probably it is the experience in high school ball. There aren't many teams that are going to be as big as St. Edward. That has to be a factor. But for most of the year, they're probably big enough. They do have the experience, the quickness, and uh, they have been free of injuries early in the year. All right, St. Ed's won the toss. They've elected to receive. Lakewood's going to be kicking off. They're going to be defending that south goal. The south is two. The camp, the screen's left, and the wind is coming from the south. It uh, could be a factor in the ball game. The officials in tonight's ball game, Brian. Well, we'll get a look at the officials in tonight's ball game. The referee is a veteran, Jimmy Dimitri. Be wearing a white hat tonight. Been around for a lot of these Friday night football games. Gene Rich, Ron O'Shockey will be the linesman. The line judge will be Ron Cahill, and Dave Leopold will be throwing the flag at the back judge position. I'll tell you what, they think they look good in those shorts, but I really wonder about it. <laughs> well, it's early in Jimmy, the year, second game. Bad knees, Jimmy. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> it's all here. Getting ready to receive. For the Eagles will be Tony Pacey, who's got that great quickness. He made the Dean team this past week for his game against uh, Strongsville, along with uh, Walter Martin. Martin will be wearing number 25, and Pacey will be wearing number 20, 32. Mike Mitchell will be doing all the kicking for the Rangers, wearing number 24. He does the punting, he does the extra points. He had a field goal last week. He does the kickoffs. There's a good look at Mike Mitchell. Number 25 is Wally Martin. Pacey will be the deep man. Number 32. And number 44 is going to be Mike Bowers. All we need is about 10 degrees cooler to be an absolutely perfect night for high school football. And Pacey is chased all the way back, goes in the end zone. Nice kick by Mitchell, and people are still knocking players down. Oh, boy, it's a 30. <laughs> that's what it's going to be. That ball bounced back, so they had little time before it crossed that line in the end zone. High school ball, it comes automatically out to the 20-yard line. But they were hitting already with those linemen going at it. 
the starting offensive lineup will be in the backfield will be number 11, Jeff Viscomi. Fullback will be Joyce, or Purcell, correction. He'll be placing Joyce. Mobley will be at the one halfback, and Tony Pacey, number 32, at the right halfback. We'll get to the offensive line right after this play. First down for St. Ed's at their own 20. Pacey in a tailback. Correction, that was Mosley. Mosley gets it from the passing to Spomey, a short one, brought down by Ranger Rick Benno. Picked up a couple of yards on that one. Offensive line will be Andrews and Martin. Will be at the ends, Fairfield Earhart at the tackles, and they're big. The guards are just as well. Glasgow and O'Keefe, and the center will be Blake Gettys. In at one of the right end receiver, Mike Juras, number seven. Going in tailback, now goes Tony Pacey. Pacey comes in motion. And a receiver behind him, but he brings it in. Nice move. And he's brought down from behind by Mazio and Rick Benno. Benno, number 27, Mike Mazio. Number 26, a junior, 5'8", 155 pounds. So two for two in the air. And Mike is coming. The defensive line for the Rangers will be Miller, Karate, and Price. The linebackers will be playing in a 3-4. Will be Dubal, Massimione, Norman, and Rapus. The Ranger will be Rick Benno. Mike Mazio, John Kime are the safeties. The other halfback, Dave Tate. It will be a first down for St. Ed's. Looking deep. And broken up at the last second by John Kime. And the Lakewood fans, if Kime is a familiar name to you, his brother was the quarterback last year. And Bob Andrews was the intended receiver. Second and 10. Minute 15 gone. First quarter. No score. St. Ed's took the kick off from their own 20. Jarrett's in at one split end. Mosley in motion. No place to go. No running one. Straight up the middle. And the defense shut down. Massimione with the middle linebacker. Had Preissel, number 36, the ball carrier. Joyce had a slight injury, and that's why they cited Preissel, a junior. A six foot, 195 pound junior. He'll be at fullback. And a run and shoot. but Viscomi gets it away and completes it. And enough for the first down. I think his forward progress. Benno brought him down. The receiver was Martin. Got good speed. A lot of pressure put on by Rafus. But Viscomi got it away, and he is still perfect. Like they've gone into the offense that we thought they would as far as the run and shoot to the outside. They had a couple of two backs. I'm sure they've gone to throwing each side to see the defensive coverage of the Rangers and see what they can go on, and the coaches up here will be able to pick out what they want offensively. St. Ed's will have a first down from their own 42. A lot of motion, Jarris, the end, splits. Pitch back, this is the Pacey. Tries to get outside, forced out after about a seven yard pickup by Mike Mazio. You can see the motion on a play like this with the outside quarterback is coming down a quick pitch out to Pacey leading the way as the fullback coming to the outside throwing the block in this case it was Pat Presso at six foot 195 pounds Pacey quick to the outside just started to turn it up the field. It'll be a second and about three. Good sustained drive. Right up the middle, a fullback. Price oh, he runs right into Scott Price. Price, a six foot two, two hundred pound senior. Two year letterman for the Rangers of Lakewood. The 
himself, good size as a junior, six foot, 195 pounds. Amazingly, St. Ed's Bryant starting a lot of juniors in the backfield. Mobley is a junior. Uh, Price now is a junior. He's got a sophomore, Andrews, who's behind Pacey. Uh, Mike Cheris, one of the split ends. Number seven is also a junior. Bowman is a junior. So in his skill positions, and the quarterback takes it to Scomey and gets enough for the first down as he gets to the close to the 45 of Lakewood. They picked up that first down with their wide outs, their flankers out wide, the old standby, the quarterback sneak just going up behind the big man. Blake gets at 225, number 73, moved out, got enough against the five-man front of Lakewood. St. Ed's took the kickoff, they hung onto the ball now for four full minutes, the first quarter. It's Moby, goes to the eye. He goes in motion. Mobley wants to take to the air, find some running room, and he gets to the 40 where Crotty tripped him up. You see the pressure put on the defense here. They go from the eye and the man in motion. They flood over the offensive right side. Quarterback Jeff Viscomi looking downfield, getting the linebacker drop. As soon as he does, pull the arm back in, goes upfield, gets some good yardage in a play like that. Six, eight yard pickup, or correction, six yard pickup, it'll be a second and four. Pitch back goes to Mobley. So he slips one tackle. Finally driven out by Massimione, a junior, number 52. And it could be close enough for a measurement. They're going to call out the chains. And referee's timeouts get a look at it. Mike, while they're looking at that, we can talk about the blocking of Pat Priceville, number 36. Uh, three times now, he's the lead man on that wide open offense for fullback. He has to shoot out there pretty fast because Mobley, Pacey are so quick coming around. He's got to get out there. He got out to the end, had the block. That's why they're measuring for the first down. Just shy. Good sustained drive. He held the ball for almost five full minutes. Two carries by Viscomi, one by Pacey. Mobley has one. Bryce has two carries. And three for four from for this, uh, Viscomi in the air. Just a versified attack. He's filling up that offense pretty quick. The officials time out. They're just checking a shoulder pad, the linebacker. Uh, that's Gobble goes in. He replaces Scott Price. And it's going to be an encroachment. And the way St. Ed's is reacting, it's going to be against Lakewood. That'll give him a first down. Well, the line of St. Edwards saw who threw that flag coming in. The linesman coming across through it, so he came up. As soon as he gave it to the official, we have a dead ball foul encroachment on the defense. Dead ball foul encroachment on the defense. We're winding, correct? There's that high school pole. It's always there. First down. 31. Macy. The Spomi looks. Decides to hang on to it. Got a lot of room. Gets enough for a first down as he crosses the 20. Roddy brings him down, but a nice bit of running by Jeff Viscomi, the senior quarterback. Uh, he reads the key now. They're putting all the pressure again. It's that rollout. They're flooding the left offensive area for St. Ed. As soon as he sees that the linebackers have dropped, they've taken off on the quick halfbacks. Jeff Viscomi, number 11, the 12th grader at 5'11", 170 pounds, moves on there. It's five first downs now for the powerhouse St. Ed Eagle offensive machine. Jeff goes straight up the middle, fights for a couple of extra yards. Pat Reisel now on his third carry. It's 
about that one at the 13. Remember, this drive started on the kickoff from their own 20. Here's to see the second effort, Bron. Well, that's what you need that fullback for. You get some power, keep everybody honest up in that middle of the defense. They're using a 5-2 defensive front for Lakewood. The linebacker's out wide, necessitated by the offensive pattern of St. Ed's with the run and shoot of the two backs out wide, the motion, awful lot of pressure on the defense. They need to get a rest. You just can't put this much pressure on them. They have to get over the sideline, talk to the defensive coordinator, and get some things going on there. They're out on that field too long. I think the Rangers would think that was a full moon the way St. Ed's is marching down that field. Tonight. They started off in their own 20, kept the ball for six minutes. The half of the first quarter has gone by, and they took the kickoff at the 20, marched all the way down. They've got now, I think it's the sixth first down, and they spread it around. They've held the ball now for a total of 12 plays. And they're sitting on the Rangers 13. Another. I have a second and four. They've got Bauman at one end, the right end. He is split wide. Juris, the left end. Mobley is in motion. This is Pacey on a. A slant, and he gets in. Touchdown, takes. Time were there, but Casey goes to 13 yards, and that is his third touchdown of the season. The misdirection on that counter, just a beautiful play. The hole was there. Now you can see it, it's coming back now. It's a guard pulling out on this side. They haven't come with the misdirection before. They've been flooding to the outside this time. They went away, came back with a good spin in the quarterback, a quick back, also very strong at 175 pounds. Tony Pacey, another six on the board. Getting ready to kick it will be Jim Fox. No, they, they think it's too much time. They started off with Steve Lowe was going to kick, and then Steve Lowe was injured, and they said that Fox was going to try it. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine, Mike. Well, they don't I have a 15 in their roster, so we're in trouble. Wait for, wait for my whistle, center. Last week, they scored three touchdowns, didn't convert on the extra points, so maybe this is something that they're working on this week, but we didn't get the word on who it is. And a flag is dropped. It's going to be against St. Ed's. It's a big one. That's going to take them all the way back to the. Yeah, they'd like to go. Illegal use the hands, 22 white. The illegal use the hands, number 22 white. Matt Johnson. All the way back to the 23, and they're still going to try to we'll go for a two-pointer now. Bernie's out of the range of Fox. Tommy lets it fly. Complete. Good. Pulling that one in, Tony Pacey. He had one big completion against Strongsville. He went 44 yards with one, but he caught that one. Nice pass, Viscomi, right on the money. And that makes it a seven to nothing, or eight to nothing now. That was a two-point conversion. Like we're looking at the touchdown play again now, coming back. Look at the beautiful block and a clear out. Good defensive play in there by Lakewood as they came across. That's uh, Rafus number 88, but he just got blown out. And then coming down as Pacey, as we talked about, he did the rest, blows his way into the end zone. That was Tate who wrestled him down, but not until he got across the goal line. Makes it eight to nothing, 5.52 remaining in the first quarter, and 
Canids on top. And this will be a first possession. And there's Coach Gershbaum, fourth year. Came here from North Ridgeville. Did a great job in rebuilding their program there. Also was an assistant of Warren Harding, a great defensive specialist. I think it's going to be Fox again, kicking. What at yards, half the quarter. Plays and half a quarter to do it. The men are going to be Starkovic and Garou. Are they good? Fox will kick. It's going to be a short one. And Garou gets across the 30 to the 33. Dave Lewis is the one who brought him down. And this will be the first crack at offensive football for the Rangers. That quarterback will be Ed Graham. <laughs> Fullback, Dave Craddock. Graham wants it to take to the air, gets it away. Pulling this in it is Ed August. He gets across the 40 to the 43, where Tony Rupert, along with Steve Lowe, helped bring him down. Uh, that's got to give me a confidence builder. Boy, it couldn't have been anything better with a quarterback, Ed Graham, the senior, good thrower, comes back, short roll out to his left, sets up high, throws it down in there, a little low to Ed August, number 87, working out of the tight end on the short side of the field. We're back to live action. Graham again wants to let it fly, throws it out of bounds very wisely, and he was hit as he released the ball. Defending was Mike Flowers. Good luck at Ed Graham, the senior, 5'11", 180 pounds, one of the track captains. Starter last year, the fullback will be Dave Craddock, 34. The flank will be Leighton Antonio, number 33. The tailback, Larry Visnick, number 45. And there's a whistle, stopping play of the officials. That's Dave Zenkovic going in for Dave Lewis, the St. Ed's. It'll be a second and 10 for the Rangers. Graham on a draw play, but didn't fool anyone. Right there is the Tom Zulo, number 71. Uh, right tackle, one of the returning Letterman. Boy, did he stack him up. There's the Lakewood backfield. Craddock, the fullback, he's a 200 pounder. Antonio is the flank with a lot of speed. He runs about a 4 6 40. The offensive line will be August, and Starkovic will be the ends. Uh, Ramali, Bennis, Gobble will be a guard. Rubis, uh, McCullough will be the front line. Big third down possession, Lakewood. And what an interference call, it was not called. Leighton Antonio felt that he was hit by one of the Eagles, but the official didn't see it. His back was to the play. See if we can see it on the replay. Well, I, he, he was knocked down. I couldn't down. really tell from that that quick, Mike. He did come flying down as the ball came out there, tangled in with the linebacker. Getting ready to punt will be Mike Mitchell. Good high kick. Pacey goes back. He takes it at his own 10. Steps his way, doesn't he? He's sort of a delicate little runner. He finally brought down by Dave Tate. That was a 43-yard punt by Mitchell. Four nineteen remaining. It's all the time left in the first quarter. It's an eight to nothing ball game. St. Ed's in their second possession took the ball in the first possession from their own 20 marks all the way down the field in 13 plays and took a little over six minutes and got their touchdown. First down from their own 28. This is Mobley. He spins his way and finally gets 
out of bounds as he crosses the 30. Paul Norman in the middle linebackers, the starter last year for Lakewood, is there to help bring him down. Like Al Miller, number 53 on the left defensive side, came over strong, took care of the interference. He really got level on the play, but he allowed the linebacker to come over and make that tackle. The wind is still at St. Ed's back. Jarris the end left, split to the left side, and they've got Andrews to the right side. Faces at tailback. And a whistle is in case you had to call, delay of game, taking too much time, that will cost the Eagles five yards. Twenty-five coming in now. Replacing Jarvis will be Second Wally game. Martin. Offense. Play a game. Offense. Not showing three minutes, 11 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Edge with the ball, they're enjoying an eight-point lead. Tell me, looks for Casey, decides he's covered. He's got down for a loss. Miller, along with Mark Rafus, number 88. And 88 has been almost there the entire four first quarter in getting to Scomey. This time he succeeded. Outside linebacker helping him down with help from Al Miller. Are they getting so across? that loss, Brian, is all the way back to the 22. Like they're getting across with those linebackers with their pursuit. So right now they're quick enough, especially in this series. First time they were driven down the field somewhat on the 80-yard drive. But here they're getting across, making some good sticks. Tate did a nice job on Pacey, and that's why the Scomey couldn't throw it. So they've got a second and 18 now for the Eagles. It's Mulvey going to throw it. A flag is dropped. It's a city ruptured duck going up there. A lot of pressure put on by Scott Price against Mobley. That looked like one of yours, Brian. Oh, that was further than I could throw the ball. <laughs> well, there goes your halfback pass. I'm sure they worked on it all week. Chris Mobley like to take that one back. He probably won't get too many more chances to throw that ball. Coach Flaherty came up with a play to the outsides. Scott he's, Price in here. He's the one who put the pressure on Mobley. Maybe he caused it. They didn't disguise it very well, really, Mike. No. Uh, you could tell the way he was uh, prancing back there that something was up. He dropped back, and he just didn't have any room to let go. I bring up a... There was a flag on the play. It's against the Eagles. It was denied. That'll make it third and 18 now. Or is that fourth? Fox said third, but I think it's fourth down. It is. So good defensive play. 218 now. The Eagles are going to have to kick, and that'll be Steve Lowe, number 66. He'll be standing inside his 10. He'll be kicking to Sokovic and Garou. This one goes to Garou, and he is hit hard at the 49. And is that a fumble? Nope. No, just a good hit. They, happy with it. they hit him and drove him back to the 45, and that's where they're going to spot it. And the hit was Bill Benno. We've got two Benno brothers. By the way, there's a defensive uh, front line for St. Ed's. And they are big. Miller. Right up the middle. Not much running room. It's tough running up against a line that size. You've got... Prochko, Zulo, Lewis, and an attacker was Gokowski, number 68, and Tony. That's your five-man front. The linebackers will be Lester and Steve Lowe. The cornerbacks will be Vanderlaan and Rupert, and the uh, strong safety will be Benno, and the free safety, Tim Bex. Second and seven. Gets all the way up to the 31 yard line of St. Ed's. Well, we take a look at this, and the quarterback, Ed Graham, is coming back. They're in short rollouts. Good block in there by the fullback. He goes up high with the ball, tends to throw the nose down somewhat, but he does find the seam, hits Kevin Keating. They've got their first down. 
McKinner intercepted. This is Steve Lowe. Quarterback is the only guy that can stop him, and it's Graham did. Bad break for the Rangers. They had some momentum going. Mike, there is an interception. There is a flag on the play. It's going to be after the interception. I believe it's against St. Edward. There should be another 15 yards uh, moving them back, but I think the interception will hold. How did he get the reflexes that quick on a quick pass like that? A big guy to shoot up and come up with an interception. Just great reaction time by the linebacker. Well, Lowe is one of nine brothers, or eight of them who played here at St. Ed. Steve Lowe, 215-pound junior. We got a dead ball, personal foul, White. That takes them back to their own 28 from the 45, so St. Ed's will have a first down with a minute 10 remaining, first quarter. of confusion now it's on the spotting now of the yardage the dead ball foul the interception took place the ball was down the Eds kid hit it's 15 yards but they came down with the chains a little bit too far so it's going to be a little bit longer for them to go for their first down so they've got to get all the way to the 46 47 yard line for a first down, which will give them 5, 10, 15, 20, about 25 yards. It'll be a first and 25 for the Eagles. Mike, in talking to Coach Dick Kirschenbaum, we're talking about the large offensive line of St. Ed's. We talked about the adjustments and the problems he would have. This is what he told us. I think the biggest adjustment we have to make is that we feel we're going to have to put the ball up in the air a little bit to win the ball game. Uh, I don't think we can land up there or stand up there and really muscle with them. So we're hoping we can put the ball up in the air, make them chase a little bit, maybe tire them out a little bit in the second, third quarters. Well, he's been putting the ball up in the air. He's the game plan. He knows what he has to do, and they're right in there with only eight points, just about a quarter of football gone. That was Pacey, the ball carrier, stopped by Rafers, the linebacker. Spotted the ball on the 34. Five-yard pickup. The second and 20. And that's Mobley. Goes into the high position. Deep man on the eye. And intended receiver was Pacey. A lot of pressure again being put on by Rafus. Mark Rafus, a senior, student council president, honor student. Track man, a little bit of everything at Lakewood High. Just an outstanding all-around student athlete. A lot of football player on there. They haven't had a, a cornerback or linebacking spot, but it's really a five-man front. And on that kind of play, he's go all the way against the rollout passer, Jeff Viscomi. Bob Andrews is now in it uh, left in. And there's a misdirection again by Pacey, but St. Uh, Lakewood read that one, and they just hit him. Massimione, a junior, along with uh, Karate, right there to put the hit on him. Also, the linebacker, Chuck D. Bell, number 55, came across so deep and forced the play. The blockers for St. Ed's couldn't get out. It just didn't have the quickness that they had earlier up here. That takes care of the end of the first quarter with the score of St. Edward's 8. And Lakewood nothing. And Brian, I'll be back for the start of the second quarter right after this timeout. Getting ready to start the second quarter. It'll be a fourth and 19, a punting situation for the Eagles. The Rangers' defense is held. The deep men will be Starkovic and Garou. This one goes to Starkovic. Puts his head down, gets across the 40 to the 42, and gives the Rangers good field position as he's brought down by Bill Benno. 
There, we've been saying Benno quite often. Here's a after the 40-yard kick by Lowe. And we have a Benno who is a strong safety for St. Ed's. He's a junior at six foot 185 pounds. We also have the Ranger, a Rick Benno, a senior at 5'11, 178, and they are brothers in playing against each other. Rick Benno also is the backup fullback for Lakewood. Back to action. It will be a first and ten. And quick handoff goes to the fullback, Craddock. And he just couldn't find any running room with that big defensive line for St. Ed's. We've got someone who just joined us here in the booth, John Telich, the sports anchor at Channel 3. And by the way, he's going to be doing the game for you next week. And welcome, John. Thank you very much, Mike. It's a pleasure to be here. I can speak from experience, having watched you and Brian for many years. We appreciate what you do in high school sports, and it will be a pleasure to work uh, next week in lieu of you. Nice pass, and Graham over to a tailback, Larry Bisnick. Tony Rupert was there, but not until another completion for the senior quarterback from Lakewood. Graham is throwing that ball two out of five, and we can see why he's such a good quarter. There is a flag out on the play. In that first quarter, Mike, as we watch Graham throw the completion to his end, to his halfback, Vishnik, eight plays for Lakewood in the first quarter, three rushing, 35 passing, so Graham has done it through the air, total of 38 yards. They had the ball for two minutes and 13 seconds. For St. Edwards in the first quarter, 20 plays, 61 rushing, 20 through the airways, 81 yards at 9.47 length of time. Well, March King, this one off against the Eagles. He's got the pass in the fence. White. Defensive pass interference. That gives him a first down. As Brian mentioned it's going to be a one back. The Gleason, this one again to the backfield, Leighton Antonio. And Benderlon, the senior, number 14, who is there, the cornerback to bring him down. Coming in with a play will be Joe Senko going at flanker. And Antonio, uh, Leighton Antonio will come out. Fisnick, the tailback, is way to the left side. Graham, look, oh ho! No flag on that one. And Gokowski, I think, was who had an infraction there, but Tony Rupert, it looks like, was really pushing this thing. Well, he tried to get it. Well, I'll tell you, Ed Graham is a feisty quarterback. He goes right out to the official, talks to him, tells him what he thinks happens. Looks like a pretty good field general out there for the Rangers, Dick Kirschbaum. Well, they've got Bisnick against Rupert again. Warmed under Kokowski, one of the captains, along with Dave Lewis, there to bring him down. But Rupert did a nice job against Visnik. Short rollout again, which we want to do to try to isolate him to the sideline. But the good pursuit that time, pressure defense by the large defensive line, everybody in there. And that's a big man that just hit him right there. Going to be a fourth and 11. Kokowski at 235 pounds and a weightlifting champion. Mitchell gets it away. High kick. It's going to be very short and go out of bounds. And that actually went into the stands. And I will give him a net gain of six yards on that kick. And you kick very well. That one hurts. Tremendous crowd. Every seat in the stands on both sides are have been taken. And they're sitting on the hills on the side in the end zones. This magnificent crowd. They said it'd be a sellout. 10, 11,000 here tonight. Nine forty-nine remaining. First half. First down for the Eagles in their own 37. They're leading it 8 to nothing. And this is Mobley. Tries to cut up inside. Boy, those big guys are really hitting down there. Number 36 is Paul Norman. Returning starter, middle linebacker. The senior, 5'11", 175. Made the initial hit. 
Rogers is the defensive captain. Two yard pickup by Mobley will make up a second and eight. Massimione just pushed him out of bounds, but it's a completion. And they'll get to the 42. Let's make it the 41, where the spot is. Facey now with two receptions. Mike Viscomi's throwing that ball, but they have done the short pass variety, which really is open in this run and shoot. Lakewood is taking away the deep sets. Viscomi now is 21 yards and four percent. Whoa! Oh. Let's see if he was pulled off. Oh, they're calling it against Lakewood. And John Kine just doesn't believe it. Just know it has to do with the quarterback countdown there. Usually it's about a three count, man goes in motion. That time the man stayed in the eye formation. They were in the tight, and it was a much slower defense. count. Third and Third six down. to go. Now they got the one total different play, power play situation. For them, pretty smart football. Well, that's going to be third about a yard. Andrews and Jarris at the ends. Going to be close, Mobley. And they may have to bring out. No, they're not. It's going to be a fourth. And it'll be about a half a yard. Let's see what the Eagles will kick or not. Dubal and Crody, the ones that initiated that stop. But apparently, Dan Flaherty feels that his offense should be able to pick up a half a yard. They couldn't last time. Yeah, we'll see. At 250, 230, 225, 260, they better be able to pick it up. And they've got Faisal in at fullback. Long setback. Oh, it's going to cost a five delay a game. Delay of game. That hurt. That count was changed again, but this time it went against the Eagles. So now they're back, and now we'll see another change. That punting team will have to come on. Penalties on that's 40 yards penalized now for St. Edward. Two 15-yard penalties and two delay of game penalties each, total of five yards. It'll be Steve Lowe kicking. He'll be going to Starkovic and going back is Bisnick. Oh boy, talk about getting sandwiched in. Well, we haven't seen any fair catch tonight. All the punts, everybody wants to return that ball. That time, got a few yards on it, got a good hit in there, but they have it. They're ready to go. Let's see if that offense from Lake with the Rangers and Coach Dick Kirschbaum can get moving. Eric Lester, and then that hit, 7.23 to go in the half. Remember, stay with us. Great halftime show for you. And remember, we'll also have scoreboard. Lakewood with the ball, first down from their own... 26. Graham over the middle, pulling this August. And he fights for yardage, and he gets all the way to the 40. And low and Vanderlaan, number 14, stopped him. And Ed August, the junior. That's the pass that they opened up the game with on their offense. Just a short turn. He's going to hit the short end. Remember, it's an unbalanced line right for Lakewood. Coming across all the way from the short side is Ed August. And comes across 5'10", 175 pounds, picks it off. Here he really holds his balance against the linebacker low, gets another five. Back to live action as they go straight up the middle and not much running room. May have gotten across the 40. That was Dave Craddock, senior, 5'9", 200 pounds. Not two touchdowns. 13 carries uh, last Friday night with a nine-yard average. Tonight, Braddock has carried four times the total of 10 yards, but he's going against a much larger defensive line. Braddock charging in the linebacker and the stunter, Steve Lowe. Bukowski 
Lowe teamed up on that stunt, and Lowe gets a sack to his credit as Graham goes down all the way back to the 35. Graham didn't have a chance on the play. What do you think about that kind of stunning for a high school team, John? The more and more we watch the ball game, uh, gentlemen, we can see the, the talents of, like, Kokowski, who seems to be in on almost every play, and Steve Lowe, two excellent defensive players for the Eagles. Excellent. Third and 14 as Antonio goes in motion. Right up the middle, this was their fullback, Craddock. And he crosses the 40, but it will be a punting situation as he runs into Eric Lester, one of the captains, a leading tackler in 1982 for St. Ed's. Oh, look at it again. There's long yards. They figure that's what the best thing to do is just do the draw play, hoping they can put something up through the middle. Got some yards, but not enough. They're ready to punt. Mitchell gets ready to punt. Low kick. Scribbler. Pacey grabs it. Oh. I don't think they get any shiftier than that in high school football. It's Pacey. He ran one back last week very fast. and he gets out there, he's probably the fastest halfback we'll see all year. Very fine runner. I'm remembering uh, back for Benedictine a couple of years ago, Kevin Richardson, now at Ohio State. We mentioned before the ball game, and uh, Pacey looks to have that style that Richardson did, and uh, just an excellent runner. Uh, Richardson was a good one, let him into the States. First and 10 from their own 30, 42 yard line. Comey throws it, the intended receiver was Chris Mobley. That stops the clock, 4.37. St. Ed's took the kickoff, traveled 80 yards and threw over six minutes for the only score of the ball game, eight to nothing. Second and 10. route run by number 25 Wally Martin and it's just a hook pattern and the me laid it right out there as he was hit by Mazio and Rick Benno here again now the quarterback Viscomi is going back trying to get through there's John Massimione number 52 in the linebacking he couldn't get there there was a lot of pressure now there's an extra man coming out flooding his zone enabling the completion to take place and that's the Ranger Rick Benno brought him out Looks like it still belongs to the Eagles. Well, everybody said it belongs to them. Let's see what the officials say. Massimione really put the head out. Rangers. Ah. Hey, oh, oh. Rangers love it, John Kime. His dad sitting right below us. His brother now playing at Mount Union was a great quarterback and that's What does his dad have a smile with? on his face? <laughs> and we can see him up here deep into the stands enjoying Bumble recovery of his son. He's going to watch his older son uh, play tomorrow, and then he's going to send him to go to the Browns, he tells me. Busy weekend, couple yeah. of youngsters <laughs> playing ball. Okay, Lakewood's got a first down from their own 44. Graham wants to throw again. Let's flag his thrown. And let's see who it's going to be against. It'll be a pass interference call of some sort. Now Lakewood seems very happy yep. with the preliminary call, and there you can see it. It is going to go against the defense. I don't think there's any question, gentlemen, about uh, Graham's arm, especially on that particular play. A uh, little bit of movement. He wasn't really set to throw, and he got off a real fine throw. And Matt Penley is going to give him a first down. It looks like St. Ed's is going to call the timeout. The clock is stopped at 4.02. And Defense I think this is a defensive end. I think this is the deepest penetration that Lakewood has had, except for their first uh, second drive. They were down to the 42, and now they're sitting just on the 40. So that last one, they got down to the 42. They had the pass interception, which stopped that drive. Well, Graham now is moving that three. ball. 
55 yards and that one interception to stop that long drive. Uh, four minutes, two seconds to go and a half. Remember, good halftime band for you. Mike, we are talking to Dan Flaherty, coach of St. Ed's, about the 53 points put on the board by Lakewood, talking about the strategy, the passing and running of Lakewood. This is what he told us before the game. We figure we have to do three things. One is to stop the fullback Craddock, who's a thousand yard rusher. We have to put pressure on their quarterback, Ed Graham, and keep him inside and not give him time to sprint out, and also contain the long runs of Viznik and Antonio. As Graham gets it out again, intercepted. Same spot as last time, Vanderlaan was intercepted for St. Ed's, but that's twice when Graham has been down the 40, and he's been intercepted. And it stopped a potential drive. Just when they get that offense moving, here he goes back now. It's not a deep set on it. Fires, he didn't want to go, but he kind of lofted it out there, hoping he'd catch the corner on it. It was underthrown. Defensive safety man came up. Vanderloan, a good one, one of the top players defensively that they have. Puts that ball away and look at him coming down the sideline. On top of that, Brian, he's the top kid in the senior class. Carrying a 4.4 average. Going to be valedictorian. And it's a first down for the Eagles. They throw 49. Pull back. No place to go. Mobley. And second effort, but let's see where they start, say his forward progress will stop. And the officials will spot it at the Rangers 48. 317. It's all the time remains and a half. Straight ahead. Defense has come up with a big play twice now. And they're leading it eight to nothing. And they've got a second and eight. the ranger he does the freelancing oh. out there going to the wide side and he came up and really put a hit quarterback Viscomi said he's okay but he really took a rack on that let's look at this again now it's a roll up look at the pressure coming in there he stops him from the outside he's down he comes back into the play look at the termination he's skill roll it in there boy if you ever wanted to flip on how to make a tackle with the shoulder that's what you'd watch and that's the way Rick Benno does it for the Rangers of Lakewood I wonder what the father was saying in a play like that now, <laughs> that was his first other son the fullback who do you root for just a great hit. That's the termination. That's what a football player is supposed to do. When you're knocked down, he was taken out of that play, got up, and he just didn't put his arms out. He gave him a stick. Mm. Like, look, look at that ball. Just that ball is just going out. He almost lost it on that hard play. He's reaching for it. He just gets it in. This Gomi still control the ball. The timeout is called. That stops the clock with 2.46 remaining. First half. And this Gomi just getting up again slowly. Let's see if they put the Wise and Seal in, number 12, a quarterback. He's, yes, he's coming in. Wise and Seal, a junior, 5'11, 175. Viscomi leaves with eight attempts, five completions, 29 yards. And he goes two to Martin, two to Pacey, and one to Mobley. But Wise and Seal now has a third and 10. With the ball on the own 49 after that big hit. Imagine they'll hand it off to the fullback just to get Wise and Seal into the game. No, they're oh, oh. Smoldy getting a little extra quicker out there. They're really hitting. They're going at it. Uh, Lakewood gained a lot of confidence. They had uh, jitters a little bit, some defensive lap in that first drive they have. But since then, the Rangers have been hitting hard. They know they can go with St. Edward. There you're looking at the deep men for Lakewood. One, number 45, is Larry Visnick. And the other is the end, Scott Stuckovic. As Steve Lowe, number 66, to be ready to kick, and he's standing on his own 37. High one kicking with the windows back. He's going to take a St. Ed's bounce, and it goes out of bounds at the 25 yard kick. It's out of bounds at the 20. I have to excuse me, the field is not marked. So it's difficult sometimes to follow the lines. Let's see the look. In the direction Let's where see we are look sitting. We get the G here and then come back and see if we can run the draw. Well, you heard it. See if we can okay. get that, run that draw. It may work up the middle because Graham has really been putting the ball in the air. He's four for nine. Over the middle. That's their 
Dave Credock, and that's the fullback that Coach Hardy said they're going to have to stop. Bill Benno, the brother of Rick, who had that big hit on this, on, uh, this Comey, is the one who brought down Credock. Well, Craddock getting into the offensive flow now. He was all LEL last year, good, strong running back, and maybe he's going to get his shot now, see if he can go against the inside of the defensive line. Well, he got him a first down. He gets the call again. He crosses the 35 to the 37. Clock showing 207 and running. Two yard pickup. That'll bring up a second and eight. Westwick. He goes in motion. And a lot of pressure put on. The intended receiver was Scott Starlick, Starkovic, but a flag was thrown. I want to remind you at halftime, we're going to have a great halftime show. Marching band from both schools. As the applause would indicate that the penalty is going to be against the Eagles. And of course, we'll have uh, Jack Wheel and scoreboard. You stay with us. Not sure in a minute 42, another first down on that penalty. We got a personal foul, roughing the passer, 52 white, first down. First down, roughing that passer. Got a lot Tony. of life. That's 70 total yards on penalties against the Eagles so far in the first half. Again, this thing goes in motion. And counter play slipping was Antonio, and the defense was right there. It's kind of that looked like the identical play, the touchdown that St. Edwards got uh, earlier in the ball game, but only this time, uh, slip trying to make the cut, and defenders right there in the play by St. Edwards. That's the kind of play you like to do after a penalty like that, come back with your quick men to the inside, see if you can shake them loose, defenses down, but St. Edwards wasn't. Graham, quick hitter right over to Antonio who gets across the 30 to the 28, where finally Vanderlaan had to bring him down. Graham firing it again. He goes up high on the toe, throws it down, does put the point down somewhat, but still completes him. Leighton Antonio, number 33, grabs it. They're up there again. Another first down. The Rangers are moving, getting the offense in gear, but there's going to be a timeout down on the field. Uh, clock showing a minute and six to go. This drive for St. Ed started, or for Lakewood started on their own 20. Like that timeout was the official's timeout and spotting the ball, they had it up for about a yard or two, a little further up the field than the spot took place. They're set, change are set. Here we go with the offense, Mike. They've got a first down from the Lakewood, or St. Ed's 28. Short pass, broken up. Breaking it up was Vanderlaan. The intended receiver was Keating. And now Graham is 5 for 11, throwing two interceptions. And he now has a second and 10 with a minute and one to go in the first half. Vesnik, halfback, is swift way left. Let's see if Graham wants, Graham wants to go to him. He's lobbing a deep one. Intercepted. Third interception against Graham. And that's with 54 seconds showing on the clock. Interception was made by Tim Bex, the free safety. Oh, here it is with Graham. He's just going up top, trying to get a timing play with a halfback flanker. Antonio, number 33, almost connect, <laughs> but a lot of room there for the free safety, Tim Bex, number 27, to come across another big interception for St. Edwards. The Eagles come up with the interception to stop the Ranger attack. As I said, that was the third interception. Vanderlaan has had one. He is the cornerback, Steve Lowe. The linebacker had one, and now the free safety, Tim Bex. And the interceptions, the three interceptions have stopped potential drives and broken drives for Lakeland. Twice they had interceptions at the uh, about the 25-yard line of uh, St. Ed's. This one, they've got the ball spotted at uh, St. Ed's 5, so it's hurt them. I know you're looking down the field, and you see those guys, and he was 
54 seconds to go. First half. And so have it, they'll probably run out the clock. And now Graham has three interceptions, 74 yards, five of 11 as compared to Viscomi. Five for eight, 29 yards, and he is, of course, he's injured after that deep hit. And he is being replaced by Wisenseal, number 12, who is, I think, still in the lineup. Head coach Dan Flaherty, who comes out into the huddle. Remember, they have the option Ohio High School ball to either come out into the huddle or call someone over the sideline. He goes out and talks to the offense. This Comey is in. back in, right? And he's just going to fall on it. That'll run out the clock. At least here in the first half, we're seeing evidence of the the classic rubber band defense. Uh, you know, the Eagles are bending quite a bit and just coming up with a big play. And uh, all that counts is what shows right there. I tell you, there's some kind of defensive ball club. You're right. They have uh, bent, but they have never broken. The interceptions have stopped their drive. Keep your hands up. But I'll tell you, Graham is doing a nice job. He's throwing to a variety of receivers. Uh, he's hit Antonio twice. Uh, amazingly, his primary primary receiver has split in. Starkovic has not had a reception. Uh, August has had two. Keating has caught one. And uh, they're 20 yards for Keating. That's the one that brought him all the way down, and they had to pick in a section right after it. That quick hitter right over the middle. So that's, they're having their problems with interceptions, but outside of that, that's their only real weapon because they've only picked up a total of 14 yards on the ground. A couple of plays in that last drive before the interception, I noticed Vishnik uh, getting himself open on the left side. Of course, most of the play was uh, generated on the right half of the field. And it is tough, even in high school ranks, uh, for a quarterback to have that entire field vision. Although Graham and uh, the quarterback Viscomi for St. Edwards are both uh, showing to be excellent quarterbacks here today. Well, I'll tell you, Rupert is hanging all over Viscomi like a slug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just going to kill the clock again. Let's take the hand off. Viscomi apparently is just healthy. Had the wind knocked out of him. And that is. The Lakewood does not have any more timeouts, so that means the St. Ed's can run out the clock. And the half will end with the Eagles leading it eight to nothing. And this is one tough 24 minutes of high school football. I'll tell you, this first half has been hard hitting. Uh, excellent uh, skill position play by both teams. That'll give them a five yard penalty and then they'll Then they have to land, but just excellent first half of football. I think they're going to be able to see if they can pick out a real tough game for you next week, too. We've got a couple in mind. Well, I'm, I'm counting on you, Mike, to yeah. pick out an excellent <laughs> game, and I, as you always do. So at any rate, I will look forward to calling the play-by-play -play and working with Brian next week. There's nothing like it. It's always here at high school, isn't it? There, there really is nothing at all like high school football, especially in northern Ohio. Yep. And they say this is going to be a prime uh, recruiting ground, Ohio, this year. Akron has got some magnificent ball players. Uh, Massey has got two high school All-Americans that are going to be there. And I imagine signs. a few scouts are here tonight. Well, I hope to <laughs> tell you, a there's few. a lot of size. <laughs> well, you talk about good ball. There's been eight All-Americans at St. Edwards since the history of their school, yep. which hasn't been that long, and they've had over 30 All-Ohio ball players. So you know they're watching this type of football tonight. Well, the scouts have really got to drool when they see 260-pound uh, tackles. Oh. <laughs> but I saw that this week. I really, I couldn't get over it. I said, oh, Edwards had a big offense for 32 yards. Antonio, two receptions from his quarterback, Graham, for 25 yards. And the tight end, August, two receptions, 29 yards, both across the middle to open the offensive series for Lakewood then in the second quarter. And that is where most of it came for Lakewood Rangers. Some of the highlights in the statistics for St. Edwards. Viscomi has five of eight, 29 yards. Casey has four carries for 28 yards. Mobley at the half, five carries for 18 yards. And Martin in the receptions. Wally Martin, we talked about the split end wide out, two receptions, 18 yards for the offense of St. Edwards. So we can see that uh, spread out pretty good. A little better passing department for uh, Graham, five out of 11. Viscomi, five out of eight, but very short. Receivers, Martin has two, Pacey has a couple. First down, seven of them for St. Edwards and seven also for Lakewood. A couple penalties that we talked about. There have been four 15-yard penalties 
for the St. Edward Eagles is only 10 yards. Good control out there with penalties, only two five-yard penalties for Lakewood. Possession times I mentioned earlier, a little higher for St. Edwards. We'll see how the second half goes. First two very good defensive quarters for Lakewood. St. Edwards moved that ball, but then Lakewood would get strong. Lakewood sent to move the ball. Edwards would come up with the big interception, the big play. That's the way it went for two quarters. I think the Rangers saw they can play ball with St. Edwards. That's probably as important a thing. Now if they can get that offense in gear, get a good start. I think we're really ready for two excellent quarters of football. The first two were great. St. Edwards against Lakewood for the city championship here out early in the year. So as they're teeing it up, Mike, let's have a lot of fun with this third quarter. I think these two units are really going to go at each other. He's ready for the ball game, and here's Mike with second half action. And ready to kick. We're taking a guess that it's going to be Fox. He has his numbers 53. He has no one. is 15 on the right. Brought that one up, got into the position. Now we'll see what their offense can go with the Rangers. Graham's back in at the quarterback spot. And see what they do at halftime, see what adjustments they've made against this strong five-man defensive front for St. Edward. That Graham at quarterback. So it was the first down and the first offensive play as coming out of the lineup is going to be Starkovic. He'll be replaced by Keating. It was a two-yard pickup. That'll make it second and eight. Coming in is Keating now, 85. Starkovic comes out. And Graham has been successful in the air. And he's got this Nick split here to the near side. Graham just no place to go. And Rupert is still all over Visnik. All right, that time with uh, Craddock, Graham, I think they want to use an outside pitch on the play, but the quarterback got knocked so deep that the trail man ended up in front of him, really. It was kind of a broken play because of the good defense and the good defensive pursuit or push in by the off defensive line. Kurkowski, number 68, one of the defensive captains. Internet stop, that'll bring up a third and 12. Graham again, being pressured, lets it fly. Oh, what a hit, in and out of the hands of August, but Vanderlaan hit him just as the ball got there. And he couldn't hang on. A lot of pressure being put on by Jeff Tony, and Graham just lucky he got that ball away. But that'll bring up a punting situation now for the Rangers. Mike Mitchell standing at his own 10. Gonna be a high kick. Not as long as previous kicks, but it takes a Lakewood roll. Gets across the 50 to the 45 to the 43. And with a roll, that was a 34-yard punt for Mitchell. So the Eagles will take over. Good field position. They're leading at 8 to nothing. Just early opening two minutes of the third quarter both teams defensively able to stop the others the interception has stopped Lakewood and good defense has stopped St. Ed's they've been able to pick up some on the ground but not as much as they won't have in the past Tony Pace he was a ball carrier right up the middle he ran right into the linebacker Charles Dubo or Dubo Picked up uh, about a yard on that, maybe we call it a yard and a half. Let's call it a second and nine, third quarter. Nine and a half minutes to go. Quarterback will be Viscomi. Mobley will be one half back, Pace to the other. And Pricer will be the fullback. And this is Pace, he gets the call. He twists and turns his way across the 45 to the 48, where Mark Rafus helped bring him down with of assistance from Thomas, some of the other Rangers. And to bring up a third down. Price also in on the stop. So third and four. 
The defense here going to try and hold them. Brian mentioned that they have proven that they can play with St. Ed's. The defense has pitch back. This goes to Pasty. Drives around the corner, and I think he was held short of a first down. Right there again was Rafus, a cornerback or a linebacker. Good job. They're going to spot it at about just over the midfield strike. That'll bring up a fourth and a couple of yards. About three. Pacey with seven carries, 37 yards. And Mike, in that series of three plays, St. Edwards probably the three that I've seen him go with just power football. <laughs> inside the tackle, Pacey a little bit to the outside. And they're just going, trying to move that ball inside. Kicking will be Steve Lowe, the punter. He'll be standing at his own 37. Back feet will be Sterkovic and Groh. Groh backs up. He takes it. He's got a hole. This car luckily caught from behind. Good movement out of there. The hole was there, and he almost broke it. So Groh gives the Rangers good field position. You see it again, goes to the outside. It gets by two men with that move that puts that ball away. Right here, he's just about ready to go. If he had a little more room, good pursuit from behind because he's a quick one. They're ready to come up with their offense. Graham lets it fly, completes it. Nope, they say he trapped it. Lester was there defensively. Antonio was the intended receiver. On that return by Groh, he returned at uh, 30 yards after a 23-yard punt. The big thing is the defense of Lakewood stopped St. Edwards that time. Now they get a chance to put the offense in motion and see what they can do with it. All spotted just over the 40. Graham again being chased. It's a fly. He's got a man open. Graham that one in and was keen for his second big reception. The junior gets him deep into Eagles territory. John Vanderlaan was defending, but Graham just laid that in beautifully. Graham moved to the outside. He's quick. He has plenty of time, and he gets to the outside, and the defense cannot get over there that far. Keating turned the corner, went down. Perfect pass. They're up again. Another first down. It's a first down at the St. Ed's 24. And a draw play. This is Craddock. And he finally tripped up by Bill Benno, or else he may have picked up a few extra yards. We'll spot that one at the 24. There's the handoff. He actually went by Dave Craddock and then kind of slipped it back in. And Craddock then comes to the outside, had some room, but Benno came up fast and made the stop. A spot there at the 22 to make it a two-yard pickup. Graham again. He lets a quick hitter. This one to Antonio. And flag is dropped in the backfield. And that will be a first down if it's not called against Lakewood. But from where the flag was thrown, I would assume it would be a call against the Rangers. It looked like Rangers probably holding. At least that's what Ed Graham, the quarterback, came back and tried to tell the coach so they could talk over what play they would want to do. It's a long one, all the way back to the 37. Holding right guard offense, complete a pass, correct? We got second down over. So it'll be second, and they've got to get all the way to the 15, so the second and 21. from behind by Dave Lewis, a nose guard. Well, he shows awful good speed, catching him from behind. Kind of the same rollout that Graham has been getting away with as he's come across there, and that is number 60 that's down. That was Dave Lewis, Mike was just talking about, that came across so fast in the pursuit, just didn't give Graham a time to set, even for a second, get that arm caught. He chased him right into the sideline, shaking up on the play. 
now up on his feet with the Ardwin taking off. Replacing Lewis will be a junior, Zenkovic, number 77. Dave Lewis is 5'11", 170-pound junior. He's the lightest player on the defensive line for the Eagles. It'll be a third and 21 now for Lakewood. And a screen pass. This is to Antonio. Tries to get around that corner and gets across the 30. Dragged down by John Hooper. Number 43, 5'11", senior, whose father was quite a football player against West Tech. There was a flag on that play. See it again. Well, he comes over here now. It's setting up to the bottom of the screen. That's Leighton Antonio getting it here. There's a lot of room, but it closes fast because of the speed of St. Edwards. But at the end of the play, there's a flag thrown. They're talking to the captain. But Antonio moved the sideline. A lot of yardage on it. They didn't get it, but it started to develop. Referee Jimmy Dimitri now talking it over, making the decision there is the captain, Doug Krokowski, number 68, six foot, 235. Uh, saying about uh, Tony Rupert, his father was quite a football player at West Tech. He went on to Bowling Green. It's hard to believe he's got a son as a senior already here at uh, St. Edwards. Outstanding wrestling football player, his dad. Coach for a while in Parma. Flipping. 45 off that third down over again. Well, we inbounds. We're all the way back to the 44. Still have to get to the 15, and it's the third and 31 now. Two major penalties, and he's going deep. Antonio reaching it, grabbing it, and gets about the five-yard line. There's Graham again. It's a short rollout, more of a drop back. You can see him get set, pull it back to the air, let go with it, the furthest pass he's thrown for the evening. That's Graham on the receiving end. Is Leighton Antonio, number 33, stretches out, pulls it in. They're up there now, getting in close, and they got their first down. They had a bundle to go. They got it. They're calling Leighton off the field now. He's okay, but just give him a little rest after that long couple of runs. Remember, he just received on the screen pass the play before. Third and sets in 65 yards, and he has four six feet. He's a sprinter in track. He caught one pass in the game uh, against uh, West Tech. But honor students, four six feet. Not too shabby. Good football player. Well, that's the deepest penetration for the Eagles, or for the Rangers, under head coach at Kirschenbaum in his fourth year. And they score here, they've got to go for the two, and that's going to be an exciting play. Everybody in the stands are going to be on their feet on both sides. A good 11,000 fans here at the game. Every seat is taken, standing around the entire playing area, including sitting on the hills on the, uh, in the end zones. Here we go. It's going to be a first and goal from the five. Well, Graham at quarterback. Craddock is the fullback. He's a lone set running back. He gets the call. Oh, he stood up. He took a shot from Steve Lowe, the linebacker, at about the four. It sent him back a couple of yards. Lowe, 6'1", 215-pound junior. And then when he got through working on him, Kukowski at 235. Just stood him right up also. So hard to run into the middle. Now, they did it twice here in the third quarter with Dave Craddock. 200 pounds, getting more yards than that. But that time, they tightened up, kicked into the inside, didn't have any place to go. They probably have to loosen it up. That was Kevin Keating, number 85. You see coming into the end. It'll be a second and goal from the four. And a quarterback, Graham. In a fumble, they're saying, but the officials, I think, are going to call it down. Picked up a yard or so on that one. Out comes Keating. Back in will go August. There's Keating, number 85. Oh, here's the biggest play. Timeout. Call. Yeah, call, good. Brian. Okay, timeout. They can see why. They have to third, about three yards, maybe a good three to go. They went to the right side. They went with the quarterback. Remember, they're unbalanced right. That's the power where they usually go. When they come back to the weak side, it's usually a little bit wider uh, to the side of Ed August, the tight end. There's only two men on the left side of the center. They decide to call timeout with third and three, see what they can get going in rushing. Well, I'll tell you, Graham has had himself quite a night. He's seven for 15 at 148 yards. 
He is, and he's tough. He throws a quick, tight pass, and then he throws it. He can go deep, so they have to respect that. This is the one, though, they'd like to punch in. If they do, they can really roll on and get a lot of confidence here. And Mike, if they do, remember the score was 6 to nothing. St. Edwards kicked the extra point and made it. There was a 15-yard penalty. They came back. Lakewood took the penalty. They went again. They threw the ball for the pass for the two points to get the eight. Just unusual. We'll see what develops. If they scored a point, it could be a little bit different. As a matter of fact, there were two penalties on that play, were there not? Yeah, but they could have had the point yeah. was the big thing. And, you know, you set them back, you think you're going to get them, and then St. Edwards came back with a two-point pass. Oh, here he goes. He's got uh, third and goal, about two-and-a-half yard line. Graham, as you see, great statistics. The only big problem, he's got three interceptions. And the defense was looking for that pass, and it just heads up football by the senior quarterback, Ed Graham. Looking to his left, probably to August or the halfback. It wasn't there. Stayed in for a second. Nice block in here, probably letting him go the next two yards. Boy, did he go after that. Graham just dove into that pylon into the side. Just made it in the end zone. Six points on the board for the Rangers of Lakewood. Well, they're going to go for the two. Antonio comes back in the lineup. Then a timeout is going to be called. That hurts, wasting timeouts like this. And this we've got 4.15 on side. We have Fisnick split to the near side. And the officials have not released the ball yet. It's been a long is. quarter. And it's seven minutes gone by, and it's taken us a half hour. The receiver there, the receiver went up high. Vander Long was defending. The intended receiver was Ed August. And he was there. He was open just a little too high on the throw. So it was 4.59 to go. See Graham on the outside is starting to develop here. Thinks he has his man here. He's coming back on it. There it is going up just a little bit too high. Coming up high was Starkovic. And also coming across was Ed August. Both of them did develop because of the late delay coming open, pass a little bit high. We have an 8-6 score with the Eagles on top. Well, it's just inside. Five minutes, 4.59 to be exact remaining. It's an 8-6 ball game. Take it with a two-point lead. And that was quite a drive they put together. Of course, that big pass that went from Graham to uh, Keating that covered about they had a third 31 yard to cover uh, 34 yards just enough for the first down that got them to the five getting ready to tee it up will be mike mitchell going to be Pixie and Martin. Pacey is going to be backed up to the 10. And a flag is thrown right into the pile. On the stop there was Dave Craddock. He's on a specialty team along with Dan uh, McNee. Yeah, it will be against St. Edwards. It almost always is. And a kickoff and a flag gets thrown. It will be an illegal block. Probably blocking would be low to waist. There's so many of those in all of the football, the high school football especially. Helps your defense a little bit. Another 15 yards back. We have flipping 36 right on the run back. First down, inbound. Oh, 
That'll send him all the way back to the 15. Now if the defense can hold, it'll give Lakewood some good field position as we're late into the third quarter. Rispumi is the quarterback. He hands off to Mobley. They're a lot happy and a little bit tired, but since then, they've been Tigers out there. It'll be a second and eight for St. Ed's. And they've got Mobley as a deep man in the eye. And he gets the call, tries to come straight up the middle. It gets a little bit of running room. Dubow is there again. He gets across the... 20. And they'll spot that one at the 22. That'll make it a third and three for St. Ed. Big third down. Ed needs it to continue to burn up that clock, and Lakewood needs it to shore up their defense so they can get that ball back in good field position. Big third down possession play for St. Ed. This pitch back goes to the ball again, and he is stopped. Gonna be close, but I don't think he made it. That's uh, Massa Mioni. Massa Mioni, I should say. And they're gonna take out the chain, apparently. It's that close. Massa Mioni, a junior. Good student, six foot, 175 pound linebacker. And they made it first down, just made it. Big play for the Eagles. Just shy of the 25. They've got Bowman in one end, Jarris the other. Both split. And there goes the tailback again. Just Bowman, just great individual effort, struggling for yards. Finally, DeVoe has him by the leg and brings him down. Mobley getting and seeing a lot of action so far this quarter. They haven't put that ball in the air for Viscomi. Still five out of eight for 29 yards. They're trying to do it on the ground, and they did pick up the first down the series before, second and five. So they're moving that ball now, starting in the ground. Viscomi has 12 yards, Casey 37, and Mobley with 32. And now Casey is the deep man in the eye, and encroachment's going to cost him five. That hurts. Work to 29, and that'll give him enough for the first down. <laughs> well, they say no, it's about a foot to go, so it'll be third and about a half a yard or so. The Rangers look on. Grabbing very quickly was Dubull. Grabbed him low, tripped him up, and Pasty picks up a couple of yards. And it's enough for the first down with 224 remaining third quarter. And it's an eight to six ball game. St. Ed's enjoying that two-point lead. But they've had that in the eight-point lead from the beginning of the first quarter. They took the ball in the kickoff, took them six minutes, marched down, and got their eight points. Lakewood scored here in the midway of the third quarter. Hard fought ball game as Mobley goes into motion. This is Casey. And Casey is just stacked up. Good pursuit by the defense led by John Massimione along with Mark Rapus. Like that's that counter play that had come back with with Tony Casey from the other side. They had a man in motion, Chris Mobley, number 34. And they go behind the big fullback blocker. Usually that's good for a long yardage play. It broke once early in the first quarter, but the last couple of times it's been stuffed by the Ranger defense. It's gonna be a second and seven for the Eagles. Sitting on their own 40, or just close to it. Viscomi, and a quarterback option. He's held shy of a first down, and Massimione is linebacker again. Did an awful tough here in the third quarter, number 52. Got to get to the 46 at least, and the ball is sitting on the 43 and a half. So it'll be, let's call it third and three. Hanson, his drive has been very successful in the third down situation. And they're in a power eye. 
Ends in tight. Casey gets enough of the first down. And he breaks out of the back. He's losing the ball. Bubbles it, but recovers. Chasing him was Rafus, but that was nothing but six. But he lost the handle of the ball. I don't know how he got out of the pack. Here he is. You can see the shoulder pads putting himself back together. That was halfback Tony Pacey. It starts out as power football going for the first down. There they grab the jersey. It looks like he's going to be stopped, but he's still That's moving. That's 72. He's moving. He's driving. He moves to the outside of the pack. Now he's off and running. Remember we talked about his speed. There isn't anybody going to catch him. Right about here as he's going, and he's got that ball put away pretty good, but it just, you can see it. It's put just away. He's got to like a loaf of bread up there. No, no. He had it up in here. He had, he had it cradled. That's good. First down. Casey gets the call again. Boy, he just sneaks through. Find the, give him a little running room, and he's gone. Hey, feels pretty good. There's the Owen Kaiman on the stop. He is second and two. They're sitting on Lakewood's 15. Just shy of it. Let's call it the 16. Good. 84 yards. 11 carries. Yeah, it's going to cost them five more, and they'll give him another first down. That's twice on this drive. They're giving up first downs just on encroachments. We're talking about it. That's going to be a big one. You have the distance of the goal, which will take them just shy of the 10. Now they're going to give call the uh, personal foul, which is half the distance. That'll take them to the five. Oh, that's a shame. Be sure of it. Oh, well, we lost the official down there, Mike, but there were two penalties in the play. The encroachment, five yards, are both dead ball fouls, and the attack on the 15. So, in other words, picked up a chunk. So now it's going to be first and goal for the Eagles of St. Edwards from the six. And this is Pacey. Didn't quite make it. As time runs out, that ends the third quarter of play. And we'll be back in the goal line. Casey was able to take it five and a half yards. And now the Rangers have got to dig in. They're down by two points, eight to six. Can he'll afford to give up another six. And quarterback, Jeff Viscomi. Punches it in, touchdown. Took him a long time to make it. Oh, but... yeah, I guess they waited for him to unpile. Oh, he's about four yards in the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looked like he had a pretty good scheme there. We could see it from up here, but the officials waited on it right now. Of course, that's the coach of Lakewood. Yeah. The suspicions of a coach. And I'm sure he's talking about... And again, it's one of the unusual. It's going to be a straight-on kicker. We don't see much of that anymore. Either in high school or the pros. And it's up, and it is the line drive kick. Oh. <laughs> it made the uprights by a few inches, as you saw. But that will be Glow and the left, Antonio. Another deep man for the Rangers, and Spux, a sophomore, will be kicking. And it's six seconds gone in the fourth quarter. Lakewood will get the ball. They're going to have to do something with it on this trip. The rebound's picked up by Starkovic. Right up the middle, he's got some room. And he puts them all the way to the 45-yard line. Tony Pacey brought him down. But nice pickup. A nice run by Starkovic, who really hasn't been heard much of here in the first three quarters. A great receiver. It looks like he's had a little problem with that hit. Well, he's heard from here. He broke through the pack out here now. He just didn't know which way to cut on the play. One man back, as Mike just called it. Stop Scott Starkovic. He's down, injured on the play. Picked it up. Good field position for his ball club. Coach Dick Kirschbaum and, of course, the throwing. 
see if we can identify. It looks like it could be his right or his left. Been very gingerly handling them both. So Scott Stuckovic split end starter last year. Five foot nine, 160 pound junior. It'll be a three year starter before he leaves Lakewood High School being helped off the field. Biznick split to the far side, number 85 is in now Keating for Stuckovic. The quarterback will be Graham. Oh, he's got a man open! That's Larry Visnick, number 45. Ed Graham throwing that ball all the way down. I had to look to make sure Visnick got out there so quick. Number 45, he put his hands up late. The ball hit it in the shoulder pads. Then he put him up. I didn't know he was going to keep it. He got through here. He got some more yards, just ready to go. And carrying the ball now is Craddock, right up the middle, and he gets the Rangers inside the 10. As a five-yard pickup, that'll make it a second and ten. Only one minute gone here in the fourth quarter. This could make it very interesting. Graham looking for Keating. Being routes. Let's it fly. Incomplete. The official nurse right on it. Pulling that one in or attempting to was Antonio, the flanker. But Graham, very cool under pressure, sprints out three or four ranges ready to hit him, and he still gets that ball away. And he moved to the outside. He's playing with a lot of confidence now. Good throwing on the ball. He was hemmed in. He got it down there. No chance for an interception. He threw that ball down in deep, very low, and almost came up with the completion on the play in the far corner. It's going to be third and five. They can get a first down before, and there's Craddock. He gets the first. Dave Craddock, 5'9", 200-pound honor student. He's carrying an almost a 3-8 average. Gets them their big first down. Wide open in here for him moving up into the inside. And Dave Craddock now burst in there. He's just about ready to go. A good tackle from the deep man, Tim Beck's coming up to stop Dave Craddock. 12 carries, Craddock, 51. And it's going to be, I think it's going to be illegal procedure. Going to be called against Lakewood at their two. And I think Craddock started a step too early. There's a flag down. Mike, there may be a couple things going on out there. We'll have to see. There's two flags. One was thrown, and you called immediately. But as the play developed, there was a flag thrown back. Oh, so will that be a first down? That's still be the first. That's right. It'll be a first and goal from the three. Craddock is the fullback. Graham looks! Steve Lowe was on him, but in August, the junior 5'10", who had three receptions in last week's ball game, matches that with three this week for 31 yards. And that makes it a 15-12 ball game. So they could go for one or two. They might as well go for the one. He's got a good field goal kicker. Mike Mitchell is six or seven. And he also is a good field goal kicker. So they'll go for the one and make it 13. And then if they get field goal range, they can end up a winner. They have to get try for a field goal no matter what they did. So holding it is Mike DeBar, the backup quarterback. It's up. It is good. And that one went a long way. The 10-18 remains. In less than two minutes, we've had two touchdowns here in the fourth quarter. And the score is St. Edward's 15 and Lakewood. 
on the last touchdown. You're talking about after the... Afterward, yeah. I saw it over in his corner, and uh, their field mic isn't working, and I just want to develop with the touchdown, but I'm sure there was something going on. Well, it looks like they could be spotting it at the 45. That's where Mitchell is now standing. Now, this is worth looking at again. It's quarterback Ed Graham, 16, rolling out to his left to the short side, hitting his tight end, Ed August, number 87, for the points on the board for 12. The kick was good. We have a 15 to 13 score. Didn't take him too long, did it? Boy, they moved that ball. <laughs> and all in the air. Did a great job. So now they'll mark it off. You're right, Brian. And they will take it all the way to the 45 yard line of St. Ed's. Why don't you try an onside kick here? <laughs> you could. Uh, there's a lot of time. A lot of They've time, got a lot of momentum grade. going now. They're talking out of St. Edwards. Uh, some of the front five wondering, you know, what happened on the play. But he did throw the flag in this far corner. It was against the defense, and the touchdown was scored, so it has to be assessed. He was talking the to the leading tackler of last year, Eric Lester, 215-pound linebacker and captain defensively for St. Ed's. Interesting. I think there's enough time. I think the pendulum now has swung over to, to Lakewood. St. Edwards is talking about what they're going to do, though, because they're a little bit worried about Look at the off. lineup in their 80s, 40s, <laughs> and 20s. There. A lot of hands out there for St. Ed's. Everyone is a receiver or a running back. Remember, the ball has to... As in the pros, go 10 yards, and he must cross the 40. Like you're talking about, 32 Pacey is up there in the front line. It's sitting on the 45-yard line. Everybody in here in the stands are on their feet on the Lakewood side. He's going to boot it away. And it goes into the end zone. They'll take it off at the 20. A lot of excitement on that kickoff. Everybody on both sides <laughs> were up wondering what's going to happen with it. He boots it into the end zone. It comes out. Start at the 20-yard line. Exciting play, not a second ran off by the clock. 10-18 to go, 15-13 to score. St. Ed's has led throughout the ball game. It's coming at quarterback. Pacey gets the handoff, picks his way. He is tough to bring down. Finally, Dave Tate wrestles him down, but not until he goes right to the ball. It'll be a second and three, St. Ed. This is Pacey again, and he's wrapped up. And there's Rafus right there, but Price, along with Rafus, stopped him. Scott Price made the first hit. 200 pounds, six foot two senior. bring up a third and three. Well, you've got to remember that Dreyfus is an outside linebacker and he's in on that stop. He's quick. Andrews split. Their side. And Pacey takes the ball up and there it goes Massimiani. Boy, what a picture book tackle that was. Look at this defense. Yes, they're taking turns now. They're all doing the job with good tackling. Then when they have to, it's gang tackling. Look at that defensive team. They are so excited. They should be. Tony Pacey gets really leveled in the backfield. They did their job. It's a fourth down situation. Massimione, now that was his seventh solo tackle this game. Why is he coming on strong? And now it's going to be a funny situation. Back deep for the Sarklovic and Garau. Lowe will be punting from the inside his own 15. The return is on. Garo. He takes it at the 35. 
puts his head down, crosses the 40, gets to the 43. And they quit high with Garfield for the LEL championship last year. Graham on a draw play. Hands it off to his fullback. Craddock, and he gets across the 45 to the 47 where Lewis and Zulo were there to stop him. Coming up to the seven and a half minute mark. It's going to be a second and eight. Graham wants to throw. The looks in the interception by Lester. There's the second man through on the eye in the person of Tony Pacey. Picks up about four yards. Just inside, seven minutes remaining. Fourth quarter, St. Ed's with the ball. They've been enjoying a two-point lead. They've led throughout the ball game. But the defense now for the Rangers have got to tighten down. And the fans right below us yelling the defense. Pacey again. Pacey stays in bounds. Let's see what the official says. He stepped out. It's going to be right at midfield. Norman was there to help force him out. If he turns that corner, it looks like he stopped, and he just puts it in one more gear, accelerates so rapidly, and pulls up. Oh, here it is. It's right on Pacey now to the outside. He puts the ball away. Now, right here, he's moving along. He's got over 100 yards with this run, and he goes to the sideline. We can't see quite here, but he kicks it in gear again. Tries to make another move to get stuck, hit out of bounds. 107 yards now for Casey Bryant. And he gets the call again. He lost a yard on that one. First hit, you pick it. Anyone on the front line. Miller, uh, <laughs> Brody, Price, Massimione, Norman, Rakefuss is there. And a few times they went to the inside belly series and didn't take out that defense. Rangers hell. So the Rangers have hell. It's going to be a funny situation. They've got a chance to come back. They just hadn't given up. Well, their fans appreciate that defense over here. They gave a standing ovation to the defensive ball club. So Garo and Fisnick will be back deep. Steve Lowe, you're looking at will kick. Good high kick. And it takes a St. Ed's roll. Picks up about five, six yards on the roll. You know, the Rangers are going to have a lot of yardage to try and make up. Despite it at the 15. 85 yards. Puck ticking. Just inside five and a half minutes. There's the whole story. And I think they're going to have to do it on the arm of Ed Graham. And the draw plays of Freda. It's been their bread and butter. They have to get some big yardage plays moving down. He's going deep. just was back, he was on his heels, how he got so much on it, comes flying down the field, the defensive man coming across now in pretty good position, goes up, that's, kind Benno. Of, that's Benno a little bit early, it's going to fly out of his hands, Larry Visnick now is going to pick it off right here, he's off to the races, number 45, Visnick is going to add some more, woo, 85, Eight, five yards. wow, and they take the lead for the first time, 18 to 15, and if they get the point after, that means that the Eagles are going to have to get a touchdown. A field goal would not even tie. So trying it here will be Mitchell, who is signed for eight this season. Six for seven last week, and one for one this week. Holding will be the backup quarterback for Junior, Mike Rebar. Oh, let's go! It's not over! It's not over! It's up! Here's Pillar! including our happy coach. Rick Kirschbaum, fighting for the Viking Rush. The city of Lakewood, 1915 to score, a four-point lead by Lakewood Rangers with 4.57 remaining in the game. Mike, we're going to...
we'll look at it one more time. He's back. Remember, this covers 85 yards of the Ranger field. Defensive man goes back. He goes up probably just a little bit of a high reach. He couldn't control her, knock it down to the ground. Wisely, Larry Visnick, who works out of the outside wide left, picks it off, and it's beautiful when we see it again. Now, can you see those two brothers tonight or tomorrow oh, oh, morning boy. arguing about that play? Oh, that particular play. And now Graham is 10 for 20, 275 yards. Magnificent. Three and a half quarters of football, and it's going to be another penalty against the Eagles, apparently. Our referee's umpire, our uh, microphone is thrown out. We have to return to a nap. But late foot 20, that's a wrong score. It is 19 to 15. They went for the point after, not the two points. Rex score is late foot 19, St. Ed's 15. And it's going to be another penalty against the Eagles, apparently for a personal foul. After the touchdown, Mitchell will attempt again to kick it away and force St. Ed's to go as far as they possibly can. High kick that will go way into the end zone and will die there once it crosses. There is an awful lot of hitting going on there. And the officials were just watching it. 59 Lester is going against Mitchell. 4.57 to go. Five yards and do over a half a minute. How about that one play? Incomplete. Intended that one for Andrews. That was Tate going off to see his Andrews. Let me correction on that score. That score is 20 to 15. Ron Carino and staff in the truck were more alert than I was. I thought it was still 19. Now the first time they had six points, remember they went for the a big play on the pass play. That's the only one the extra points they missed and kicked a couple of them. That's right. My error, I'm sorry. That pass only took three seconds. 4.54. It'll be a second and 10. It's Comey. Looking and he is set. Again at the 20. No game. The defense really shutting down the Eagles now. Norman, right there to bring down to Scomey. Defense hit back, doing a good job covering the receivers. Well, the defense was well, I was just going to say, so that strong. defense is so tough. It's such a hard offense to go against when you're that big and that fast and they spread you out. But these nine people up in that perimeter are really doing a job. Third and ten for the Eagles. They've got to move it here. That's Mootley goes in motion. They hand off. You can see the fans as well as the coaches and team can taste it. Inside, four minutes to go. Clock is running. And a five-point lead joined by the Rangers of Lakewood. Running will be Steve Lowe. Lowe and Bishnick are back deep. It's going to be a high kick. So it's going to be very short. And it will roll. 45. Now, the distance is really immaterial. All they've got to do is hang on to the ball for just under three and a half minutes. And Lakewood. And I'm looking at the officials. That's why the hesitation. Christian Baum is talking to, to Jim. Mike, I believe he's talking to him. The coach that had the phones over here is having problems with the phone and calling it to the attention of the official. And that's what they're going over now. They're putting the phones back and forth and they're trying to get some kind of communication with the press box. That's on the Lakewood side. They've taken them off. 
They've taken them off. Uh, they're just saying, okay, St. Ed's, go ahead and use yours, apparently, because high school rules are when the phone on one side goes out, both sides lose their phones. And you see the assistant coaches are down from the press box down on the field. But it's got 315 to go, first down. Rangers have got it. Just burn out the clock. And Pettock, fullback, just hangs on, picks up three tough yards where Hutchko hit him, brought him down. And clock still running, down to 257. No timeout being called by St. Edwards. Well, Lake was going to use that clock. They have a good runner in Craddock for St. Edwards. They just have to play airless ball. They can't afford to get the penalty. That's the big thing here. Stop the second and third down right now. St. Ed still has three timeouts. 2.39 to go. Second and eight. Again, the pullback. Good up. Pike's play on it. And gets it up for the first down. He runs into John. But good individual effort. He got hit and still picked up enough for the first down just on sheer determination. How he did it, I think everybody knew that Dave Craddock at 200 pounds is going to carry that ball. He's the power runner, and they wanted him to do it. He went to the outside right here. He got tangled up with his man, but he knew where the yardage was. Picked up that first down, crossed the strike. I said he's got good quickness and, and moves for 200 pounds in a 5'9 frame. He picked up a lot of yards last year, and he's continuing on now here. He had a good first game and a great second game. Oh, well, he was all LAL last year, and you can see why. He just carried two-thirds of the Eagles team for about three yards. Those are tough yards, and he's picking them. Well, there you see Graham encouraging the fans to get involved. I think if you had to characterize this ball game, you'd have to say it was done on the arm of Graham and the entire defensive team. The defense is swarming defense, strong. Just so good with the five-man front, three men the outside, linebackers, five-man, whatever you want to call them. Linebackers did a fine job. Braddock gets the call again. They just burn out of the clock. Minute 20. We have Graham with six carries, but the minus yardage. Antonius one carry, or Craddock, of course, getting most of his yardage now, 17 carries and 71 yards. Leading ground gainer, of course, was Pacey with nine carries, or 19, correction, and 102 yards. And I want to thank uh, Art uh, Dietrich, the athletic director here at Lakewood, and uh, Kirsten Baum and his entire staff, and also uh, Coach Florida where most of them were the first drive when they first had the ball in their 80-yard drive for most of his completions and yardage. He really wasn't a factor as passing as the game developed. Well, they get Aaron Feta. And that was Pratsko and Lester in the stop. Graham, 10 for 20, as I said, 274 yards. Three of them caught by Antonio. Three by August. Two by Bissell, Verbisnik, and Keating with two. And one, of course, at 85 yarder to Bisnik. And the time is running out. We're down to 39 seconds. And the delay of game that will cost them five because it's a fourth and three. And, of course, that will. Then they run the play. It will turn up about another six or seven seconds. So St. Ed's will still have the chance for one or two plays, long bombs. Well, they spread it out as long as they could on that to try to get it off with a second or so to go because it doesn't really help any with the penalty. If they set them back, and then you have a little bit of a weight in that ball of snap. Everybody's in the, the line of scrimmage for the Eagles. They're not going to give them any chance to pick up another first down. Luck will start at the snap of the ball. It's a 15 to 20 score. Braddock! Yeah, almost broke it. But he was brought down from behind. The number five, Bill Benno. And the clock shows 33 seconds. See what St. Edwards comes up with in their bag of tricks with 33. The defense of the Rangers only has to hold on for a couple of plays. Well, we got back John Kime. 
And you know they're going to just throw it way up. Didn't it? Oh, it's talk about <laughs> happiness right here. We were waiting those 33 seconds out. They came up with the ball again. It's about as happy as you get in that coaching staff, the young kids from Lakewood. I'll tell you what, if I remember this correct, I think that's the first time they've beaten Santa and Dick's tenure here in four years. It was fourth year. coordinator head coach really came up with a defense to stop it this is the very last play of the game there were only 23 seconds left they wanted to wind that ball throw it as far as they could just nipped it off it went out right here a ranger's going to fall on it for the best recovery they could have at this point everybody in this part of lakewood knew that lakewood came up 20 to 15 against the mighty center in Wood eagle two great high school football teams coach clarity they just have an excellent ball club they didn't make quite enough tonight to carry it out but they have a team, they're going to beat a lot of good football teams. They have to, their schedule eight players so rough. And there is happiness out here at Lakewood. A lot of yards, as Mike mentioned, 334 to 190. Penalties, 50 for Lakewood and 117 for St. Edwards, both being penalized. 27 minutes and 52 seconds possession time for Edwards and 20-08 for Lakewood in possession. They really came up in the third.